Sarah, I have often said and meant that you are the best thing that's ever happened to me. I vow to be there for you and with you no matter what comes our way, the same way that Christ has always been there for me. I vow to thank God for blessing me with you each and every day, and I vow to do as much as I can to make our lives as Christ-centered and joyful as possible. I love you, and I vow to continue loving you for the rest of my life. Ecclesiastes 3 says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. For example, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. This season we've shared has been wonderful and I know this next season will be filled with more wonderful moments. I can promise you that I will show up every day and try. That I'll always be there to pray with you, dream with you, build with you, and encourage you. <laughs> I don't think that's... <laughs> Yay! Yeah. You look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Aww. You do. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. Would you stand with me? Do you take Sarah to be your wife? And do you promise to love her faithfully as long as you both shall live? I do. Sarah, do you take David to be your husband? And you promise to love him faithfully as long as you both shall live. I do. God has gifted you, David, and he has gifted you, Sarah, with a friend with whom you're able to share your life. David and Sarah, inasmuch as you have declared your willingness to enter into this covenant of marriage with each other and have shared the same in the company of God and all of these witnesses, and have given to each other as a symbol of this commitment, those rings. By virtue of the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel and according to the laws of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I now pronounce you husband and wife, united in the pure and holy bonds of wedlock, what God has joined together, let no man separate. David, it's that moment you've been waiting for. About to say, it no. looks like Sarah's waiting for it too. <laughs> You may kiss your bride. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time Mr. David Helton and his lovely bride, Mrs. Sarah Helton. <laughs> oh my gosh, we did it.
everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Molly. I'm Sarah's older, wiser sister. Um, <laughs> although not that much wiser because much like Sarah, I waited till the last minute to write my speech. Uh, so David will be the judge of how this goes later. Um, <laughs> You know, when they told me they wanted me to do a toast, I really wanted to get up here and, and talk about how I just knew from the beginning that David was Sarah's soulmate and that he was perfect for her in every way. But the truth was that David was kind of a hard sell. Um, I had a good reason though, okay? Their second date, Sarah calls me. It's like 10.45 at night. She was supposed to be home hours ago and she tells me, hey, gonna be a little bit late coming home. I am stuck on the side of the road. And I was like, oh gosh, your car broke down. She's like, no, David ran out of gas. <laughs> but don't, don't worry, she said, it's okay because he called two of his buddies and they're gonna come pick me up and take me to my car. And I hung up and about five seconds later, I thought to myself, hmm, he is either the worst date in the world <laughs> or this is like the most elaborate human trafficking scheme I've ever heard of. <laughs> And so I called her back and I was like, listen, I will drop everything. I'll come pick you up on the side of the highway. You do not have to stay with this guy. And she was like, no, no, actually just leave me because we're talking and he's actually really cool and I really like him. And honestly, that was the moment I thought to myself, he's either really gonna break her heart and be bad for her or she's gonna end up marrying this man. And here we are today.